Most people believe that success leads to happiness. So many people look at people who are more successful than them with jealousy, and it creates immense suffering in their lives. But the fact of the matter is, financial success is not related to happiness. Jim Carrey famously talks about how he was never happy, and he thought if he just had some success, he could finally be happy. And then he became more successful than he ever dreamed in his entire life. He had more fame than he ever dreamed, and yet he was still unhappy. He was still in the exact same mental place he was before he had success. We often think that we should put off our happiness now until we've achieved success, and then we can be happy finally. But the truth of the matter is, we have to learn to be happy now while even achieving and striving for success. Because there is only now. And what we do with this moment and how we treat ourselves in this moment determines how we'll feel in future moments. The goal of life is happiness. The needs of life are those material and financial achievements. And misery occurs when we confuse the two. Science has shown that once people have their basic needs met, more money does not lead to more happiness. Happiness does occur when we can finally put food on the table, when we can finally have enough for a roof over our head, for transportation, health care and all our basic needs. But beyond that, more money has no impact on our happiness. And while it's wonderful to strive for achievements, the question becomes, can we enjoy the journey? Can we create some space, peace, and stillness in the striving? Can we see the ups and downs of our journey with a broader perspective so that we don't lose ourselves along the way? So that we don't stress over every temporary setback? And so we don't become cocky and arrogant in our up moments? Can we maintain equanimity, calm, and clarity? No matter what is happening around us, and the answer is yes. We all have the ability within us to center ourselves. Every second we are breathing, we have the ability to breathe out any tension and stress we're holding on to and breathe in, filling our deep lungs with healing oxygen and allowing our mind and body to tap in to that infinite reservoir of joy that each one of us has within us, no matter our circumstance, no matter our bank accounts. And when we have that 
strength within us. There's no jealousy of the numbers someone else has in their bank accounts because we are in a state of bliss, mesmerized by the beauty and variety of forms in our lives, good and bad. We can simply be with it in peace, allowing nothing to disturb our inner peace and allowing our stress to lower, our health to be greater, and we are left only feeling happiness for ourselves, happiness for the success of others, and we can even enter a state where work doesn't even feel like work. And this helps us work smarter, work better, be more creative, and ultimately, be more successful. Boredom and loneliness do not exist. They are not real. They are both fabrications created in the mind from resisting the present moment. If you look around the world, you will not see physically loneliness or boredom. We are conditioned to feel boredom or to feel loneliness because we have these entertainment devices in our pockets called smartphones that whenever there's a dull moment, we can simply reach out to any source of entertainment, any human on the planet, and instantly leave the here and now for some escape. If we were to look objectively at boredom and loneliness, in both scenarios, what we would really find are peaceful situations, opportunities to reflect and meditate and contemplate. Something our species used to do all the time. Only when we compare this moment to some other desired circumstance can we ever actually experience boredom or loneliness. Whenever there is a moment of downtime, instead of pulling out that phone, and leaving the present moment. We have a wonderful opportunity to go deeper into the present moment, to discover the richness of life. And sometimes when we're going through a hard time, we can especially want to escape the present moment. We want to distract ourselves with entertainment, but all that does is let's that trauma or suffering that we're going through fester and get deeper into our psyche and even our physical body. And if we escape instead of process, and if we distract instead of heal, those negative feelings that we're needing to process can become long-term chronic pain and disease. And it is so important that we allow ourselves to feel all of these feelings. And by doing so, by not resisting, by not escaping, by not running away from them, we can observe it without getting swept away by it. And we can sit with it and most importantly, make peace with it. We can decondition ourselves from this short attention span and this quick to boredom feelings that we have. We can find that peace in the stillness that is always there. 
And once we have become peaceful and accepted feelings of loneliness, feelings of boredom, then we have that peace underneath our consciousness. And then everything we do from there, hanging out with friends and family, enjoying entertainment, we will enjoy those things so much more, not from a place of need or desperation or suffering, but from a place of already peace and joy. And everything in our lives becomes more meaningful and more joyful because we don't need it for our happiness. We can appreciate without attachment. We can love without fear. And we can be at peace in any circumstance, no matter what. Everything we do in life conditions us for that thing. Whether you're training for a sport or you're developing a bad habit, whatever we do, we are conditioning ourselves. So every action can easily become a habit. And what happens to most people is we condition ourselves for routine. Most people, for most of their lives, decades and decades, are spent with the same routine. Waking up, doing your morning routine, going to work, coming home, your nightly routine, going to bed. And while it can be a wonderful life and a simple life and there's nothing wrong with routine, we're also conditioning ourselves to resist change, to resist the unexpected. And always unexpected things do come up. Always things do change. And when we are conditioned for a routine, when that change occurs, a lot of suffering can occur as a result. And it's so important that we, instead of conditioning ourselves for routine, we condition ourselves to accept this change. It doesn't have to mean spending money or buying things, going on lavish vacations. We can all embrace change in our own way. Every single day, we can do things a little differently. We can take a different route to work. We can go for a walk to the park instead. We can take a spontaneous vacation if that's available. We can try a new thing or food we've never had. And just by creating these little changes in our daily life, whenever something unexpected comes up, we will be ready for it because we have been conditioned for change. When people spend day in, day out doing the exact same thing, the unexpected can shake us to our core. We are unprepared for change and we thus resist it. I know some very wealthy people who, when one little unexpected inconvenience arises, they go ballistic. They can't handle it. They lose their temper. You know, if a hotel can't give them the suite and they have to have a regular room at a beautiful five-star hotel, they will scream their lungs out and it will ruin their entire trip. For me personally, Whenever I get too comfortable, whenever I notice myself building any stress or tension in my body, 
or mind when there's a long line at the Department of Motor Vehicles, I say to myself, I've got to go camping. For me, I go on a hiking trip. It's free and there's no luxury out there. And it always reminds me never to get too comfortable, to always embrace change, and to always be grateful for the countless luxuries and comforts that we all have in our lives. Letting go is a skill that we can practice and strengthen like a muscle that we would train. Every single moment that happens in our lives is an opportunity to practice letting go. And this is the key to living in the present moment where there is no bad memories, no worries for the future. We're just fully in this moment at peace with whatever we're doing. All suffering happens when we are either in the past or the future and not in the present moment. Even when something bad is happening, it's actually after that moment where the suffering lives. And the more we practice always letting go, the more that we can stay in the moment and be at peace. Almost every single time in our lives where we feel pain or we're, you know, it's just so angry about some situation. It's always something that happened in the past. And if we can take every moment that's happened and let it go, we don't forget it, our memory still works. But when we can truly let go of every bad and hurtful experience, and we can even let go of joyful experiences, we will find lasting joy instead of temporary joy. And so the way to do this is to just either look at something in the present moment, fully, completely, observing the sounds and the sights of our surrounding, and to stay in this moment, which means to fully look with curiosity and intention, not labeling, judging, not fixated on something great or terrible that just happened or that may happen. Our minds are so powerful and effective. The greatest computers still to this day, we do not need to create a mental stream of thought labeling things as bad to know not to put your hand in fire or not go down that dark alley at night. That is from a higher wisdom, the knowing, not the thinking. And knowing is far superior to a constant stream of thought that is only one word at a time, rushing through our brain, often repetitive, often negative. And instead, when we can be present, the higher understanding and knowing occurs. There's a 
really wonderful notion that came from the ancient Egyptians where when they would mummify a pharaoh, they would store the heart, which they thought was the most precious part of the body, and they would rip out the brain and throw it away. Not because they thought it was worthless or they didn't understand what it did, but because they understood that it's the heart that is where our intuition and our true wisdom comes from. That hundreds of millions of years of evolutionary DNA intelligence is stored so far beyond anything the mind can think. We don't have to tell our lungs to breathe or our hearts to beat or our blood to flow. These things happen automatically because there is a greater wisdom within us. And the more we can let go of whatever our mind is fixated on, the more we can be present, the more that wisdom can guide us. The more we are instinctual, intuitive beings living through our intention and our greatest intelligence. And all you have to do is observe the present moment to be fully present and to let go of the past and your worries for the future. And that is why one of the greatest things that we can do is to simply observe our breath because it is always in the present moment. We never are looking at our past breath. We're not thinking about the next breath. When we look at our breath, it is a gateway to the present moment, and most importantly, it is always with us. And all we have to do is look at it, and we can let go of everything else. When choices are analyzed without intention, we can be swayed from one choice to the other, and we can become stuck in indecision and inaction. But simply spending some time with ourselves, spending some time listening to our thoughts, understanding and reflecting on our past choices or what we tend to naturally gravitate to we can have a much fuller understanding of the life we wish to create for ourselves we can leave situations with confidence and strength when we know it doesn't serve our higher interest and we can seek out and enter into situations that do serve our highest good and our higher purpose. Most people will spend most of their lives not actually getting to know themselves. We tend to resist reflection to avoid contemplation and to fill every moment of our lives with some activity or entertainment. The moment someone leaves their table, the person sitting pulls out their phone. Or we see now almost everyone walking down the street with headphones in their ears. And while enjoying these modern marvels, our fun and enjoyable. It's so beneficial to notice the compulsion to avoid any reflection, any introspection. Before you pull out that phone, spend just a few moments 
to just sit and allow the peace of the stillness and the quiet to arise and to just observe the moment, observe your thoughts and the nature of your mind. When you take that walk, before you put in your headphones, maybe just walk for a few minutes, enjoying the sights, see where your mind wanders to, allow whatever comes to come and just be with yourself because it is being with ourselves that we get to know ourselves. Just like when we're with someone else and we put down the phones and before the movie starts or before the dinner starts, where we just share the space, hear what the other person has to say, because words are just the thoughts we choose to speak out loud. And so we truly get to know the other person. And when we're alone and we put away the distractions, we can truly get to know ourselves. And when we get to know ourselves, we can understand what makes us truly happy. And we can build a life built around who we are and what we want and not what the media tells us we should want or what our neighbors have, but what we truly value. The only thing that makes life complicated is us. When we are out of touch with our true nature, when we overthink, overanalyze, because we don't know deep down who we are. Once we truly know ourselves, we can even further simplify our lives by getting rid of and removing the things that are just distractions that don't make us truly happy. And we can begin to make space for the things that bring peace and lasting joy into our lives. Everything that we see around us that was built by human hands started in our mind. Someone imagined it and brought it to life. And so the world around us is a projection of our mind, of our mental state. And as we raise our consciousness as a species, the entire world changes as well. Now there is pretty much no corner on earth that thinks slavery is okay. But at one time you couldn't find anyone who was against it. And so we're always evolving our consciousness. And as a species becomes more mindful, every single action and decision is done with compassion at the core. Profit could not be the motivating factor in a world run by mindfulness. We would only be cooperative instead of competitive. Because everything can be achieved when we work together. In a world of mindfulness, we wouldn't do things or consume things that would harm the planet for the future generations. We would be mindful of the consequences of our actions and we would all honor our ancestors while protecting this planet for future generations. There really would be no greed or corruption if leaders were mindful of 
the interconnected nature of all humans and species on this planet. And we could really get together to solve the problems that we created. Duality and non-duality are not two sides of the same coin. Non-duality is the coin. Duality is the two sides. That is to say, within non-duality, within oneness, there are many forms many expressions of physical and sensory phenomena. The correct way to see a reality is as one whole. Seeing the variety within the whole. The human brain can really only hold one thought in its head at one time. But we have to understand this true nature of cause and effect and how every thought has a ripple effect that changes the world. Our thoughts become words and our words become actions and those actions become habits and collectively they become society. So understanding non-duality doesn't mean turning a blind eye to our world as it appears it simply means expanding our perspective to include the greater understanding of the interconnectedness and interdependent nature of all things the ever-changing impermanent physical reality which has emerged out of infinite space and eternity. When we become as equally aware of the connectedness of all things as we are aware of the things themselves, suddenly those impermanent physical objects that we cared so much about become much less heavy on our psyche. When we tap into that eternal, these temporary phenomenons no longer dictate our inner peace. No longer does every decision we make come from a need to be immediately gratified because objects, experiences, and pleasures no longer are needless attempts to fill our hearts with joy and peace. This really goes hand in hand with one of the leading theories of everything, string theory, which hypothesizes that the universe is made up of these tiny, tiny strings that go throughout the universe and like a guitar can have many sounds coming from a few strings these strings can create all of the phenomena that we see in our world and it's the different vibrations that are responsible for all of the things we see and experience in this physical world and so the physical phenomena the ever-changing vibrational experience of our lives is like different notes on the oneness that is the guitar, which is the universe. And the more we can be aware of that rock show that creates our universe, the more we can just enjoy the show and not be totally lost in it. And we can bring mindfulness to every moment of our lives.
We live in a universe of infinite forms. We must live in this world of physical objects. We must interact and accept this dualistic nature. And it is how we can navigate ourselves through this physical world. But underlying these separate forms is an energy field that connects everything, that allows everything to exist. There isn't duality versus non-duality. There is the many forms and there is the interconnectedness of all forms. There is the relationships between all things. And it is important that we recognize both aspects. It is like the little dots on a golf ball. There are many little dimples on a golf ball, but there is one golf ball. And this is the nature of reality. We must see both. We must recognize that there is no objective reality, that it is all subjective and dependent from our perspective and how we relate with the world. But there are also constantly arising changes in experience. But at the same time, there is the empty space from which those forms emerge. There is a stillness which allows us to experience these forms. There is a silence that allows us to hear sounds. And when we recognize both, we have a greater perspective and a greater wisdom and understanding arises. There is no death and there is no birth. There is only change of form because life is eternal. In this perfect magical world where we are born into it and there are trees with delicious fruits waiting for us and bodies that can process them and trees to build shelter and everything is here for us when we get here. We must also trust that the universe doesn't make mistakes and that the process of birth and death are nothing to fear. They are not accidents. They are equally beautiful processes of transformation. We will never be born and we will never die because the universe was never born and will never die. There is only change. Like the shape of the ocean will change constantly, but it doesn't disappear. Even the water that evaporates, it goes somewhere, it becomes rain. Everything is simply change. And every beginning and ending are simply illusions. Before every beginning, there was something before that. And after every ending, life still went on. The more we understand on a deep level this impermanence, this temporary nature of all things, the more peace and joy we can bring to every situation, no matter how bad or how difficult. We can still have goals and work to achieve things, but we're not attached to the outcome. 
We're not fixated on the end result. We are fully in the present moment and all of our attention is on the task at hand so that we can perform better, so that we can do what needs to get done now to create a brighter future ahead. Mental health is about how we process our experience, but spirituality is the quality of that experience itself. With mental health, we can function and get through the day, but with spirituality comes love and joy. It is how we see the world. And by seeing the world as beautiful and magical and special and sacred and precious, our mental health can even improve. Because spirituality is going to the very root of our experience. It is consciousness taking a look at itself turning inwards and connecting with the non-material life force energy inside of us. When we do this, we realize how insignificant our stressful meeting at work was, or that mean thing that driver yelled at us on the road. And we can become deeply familiar with this calm, changeless, eternal light within us. This higher consciousness, this higher awareness that goes beyond the physical world as it peers through the spiritual. It is in this stillness where we find peace, where we find strength, this deep, calm, quiet, ocean miles deep just beneath the crashing violent waves on the surface it is in this state with no thoughts and just pure focus on the present moment and tapped into that eternal light within that time stops and that we can experience eternity in an instant as we get out of our heads and we tap into this deepest understanding and wisdom that is disguised as intuition in our bodies. As we experience this void, this deep peace in deep meditation or in moments of pure awareness and presence, nothing exists except this peaceful spaciousness and as is an empty space if we were floating in deep space and there was nothing else around as far as you could see you wouldn't know if you were upside down or sideways and you wouldn't be able to comprehend the passage of time because time is measured by the earth rotating and revolving around the sun. We can only have time and an understanding of our place through its relation to something else. And so in our normal thinking mind, as thoughts chatter on constantly, we have a sense of time passing because we can measure it by our thinking. But in pure stillness, there is no time, there is no space, because you are the eternal and infinite.
There is a fundamental law of the universe that physics really hasn't looked at or explored in depth. And this law of the universe, this law of our reality, underlies every other law of physics, from quantum mechanics to the theory of relativity to gravity and everything else. And we so seldom look at root causes and explore concepts holistically that we kind of missed this. And it really does unify the way large structures like planets move as well as the very tiny microscopic particles. And I think that because we have missed this fundamental nature of reality, that it has caused all of the suffering in this world. And that fundamental truth, that law of physics and nature, I call the law of change. Ever since the Big Bang, that point that is as far as we can go back and look at, every single moment was changing. No two moments were alike. The universe was expanding. And until the end of the universe, this change will be constant. And it doesn't matter if it's particles bouncing off each other or stars and planets flying away from each other. This law of change underscores every single aspect of our existence. Our heart beats, our blood pumps, electricity is firing and energy is flowing all around us. And while sometimes change happens slowly, and sometimes so slowly we don't see it, such as a piece of fruit rotting, or a plant growing, or a building deteriorating, you know, these things that happen over days, weeks, months, years, our, our own growth even, because we don't see it happening before our eyes, we fall for an illusion that there is permanence, that there is stagnation and sameness. And this false illusion is the cause of all human suffering. This is the cause of boredom because we're failing to see the newness of each moment because we're comparing it to a past moment where things may appear similar on the surface, but in reality, there is so much going on. The more we understand this law of change, the more we can overcome any negative mood, feeling, situation, because we know deep down this is not forever. And the more we fully know this and understand this, think about it, talk about it, and make it a natural way of seeing the world, then no temporary circumstance, and every circumstance is temporary, no circumstance will be overwhelming, will cause negative emotions, because we will know this fleeting thought form or emotion or displeasing situation is only here for a minute and then it's gone forever. And it only lives if we are attached to it. If we thought it had some importance that we must carry it with us beyond its brief lifespan. And we need to constantly remind ourselves and remember in every chance we get that 
this moment is only here for this moment and then it is gone and this frees us to live life to the fullest to cherish every moment while simultaneously never getting attached or resist any moment because we are just flowing with time and we appreciate the beauties that we see in the world and we can just let go and leave in the past whatever is displeasing. <laughs>